but certainly not least, um, I want to sing a song that also, well, okay, imagine this. 1959, it's Thanksgiving, Morris and Sonia have come to Great Neck on the train with a suitcase full of Jewish currants, of course. <laughs> and, and, and always, didn't matter, Passover, Thanksgiving, he had had a, a satchel full of Jewish currants. And everybody in my family was musical in one way or another. And at that point, we had a piano. My sister, who's 10 years older than me, would play piano. My brother, who's about seven years older than me, was playing the banjo at that time because Pete Seeger was pretty hip. And, uh, and I had just learned to play guitar. My mom would play auto harp, and my dad would play harmonica. Not too well, but, but we let him do it. And there was this song that was uh, just become popular. And we, this was kind of like the, the helper and family who did it. And I just, in, in researching some stuff, I didn't realize that this song had any connection to the Communist Party. But in somewhere through the beauty of the internet, I found the testimony of Pete Seeger before the House on American Activities Committee of August 1955, when Chairman Walter was asking him about some stuff he had sung at the Allerton Houses and some, uh, okay, but he says, uh, he asked him about a song called Now is the Time. And he, which you sang at Wingdale Lodge. And Mr. Seeger says, I don't know any song by that name. I know a song with a similar name called Wasn't That a Time. Is that the song? Chairman Walter, did you sing that song? Mr. Seeger, I can sing it. I don't know how well I can do it without my banjo. Chairman Walter, I said, did you sing it on that occasion? Mr. Seeger, I have sung that song. I'm not going to go into where I have sung it. I have sung it many places. <laughs> Chairman Walter, did you sing it on this particular occasion? That is what you are being asked. Mr. Seeger, again, my answer is the same. Chairman Walter, you said that you would tell us about it. Mr. Seeger, I will tell you about the songs, but I'm not going to tell you or try to explain. Chairman Walter, I direct you to answer the question. Did you sing this particular song on the 4th of July at Wingdale Lodge in New York? Mr. Seeger, I have already given you my answer to that question and all questions such as that. I feel that it is improper to ask about my associations and opinions. I have said that I would voluntarily be glad to tell you any song or what I have done in my life. Chairman Walter, I think it is my duty to inform you that we don't accept this answer and the others, and I give you an opportunity now to answer these questions, particularly the last one. Mr. Seeger, sir, my answer is always the same. Uh, and then he goes on and on about that song. Okay, then he says, uh, Mr. Tab, were, was that, were you chosen by Mr. Elliot Sullivan to take part in a program on the weekend of July 4th at Wingdale Lodge? Mr. Seeger, the answer is the same, sir. Mr. Willis, was that the occasion of the satire on the Constitution and the Bill of Rights? Mr. Tabiner, the same occasion, yes, sir. I have before me a photostatic, photostatic copy of a page from the June 1st, 1949 issue of The Daily Worker. And in a column entitled Town Talk, there is found this statement. The first performance of a new song, If I Had a Hammer, on the theme of the Foley Square trial of the communist leaders, will be given at a testimonial dinner for the 12 on Friday night at St. Nicholas Arena. Among those on hand for the singing will be Pete Seeger and Lee Hayes, and others whose names are mentioned. Did you take part in that performance? Mr. Seeger, I shall be glad to answer about the song, sir, and I am not interested in carrying on the line of questioning about where I have sung my songs. So, and on and on, he finally says, I feel these questions are improper, sir, and I feel they are immoral to ask any American this kind of question. So, little did I know as a six-year-old that I was singing a commie song. <laughs> no, I, yes, and I, I don't, I'm sure you all know what I'm saying.
I'll tell the audience about that song. First, in Lee Hay's memoir, his review, it's revealed that it was inspired by the end of Mark Litstein's Airborne Symphony, in which the monitor proclaims, not without warning, not without warning. And Lee Hayes wrote that lyric, inspired by that symphony. He sent it to Pete Seeger, who didn't even know the inspiration until I told it to him just recently. But one thing that he told me that none of us knew either is that, how, that of course, Peter, Peter Paul and Mary made the song famous. The Weavers did not sing it at first, because Harold Leventhal forbade them to sing it saying, I got you off the blacklist. I don't want you singing about hammers and sickles out there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, it was a communist song in, in, in various levels and various times. 